So now we have the final lecture on this topic of seismic design concepts. As mentioned previously, an earthquake is a random and unpredictable event. The dynamic behavior of structures is also very different and much more complex than in case of the static effects. Considering these two, the analysis of seismic effects on structures is becoming more challenging. Analysis methods in seismic engineering can be grouped from the most simplistic to the most complex, as shown in the table. These methods are classified as either being static or dynamic, and linear or nonlinear. Several methods should be taken into account when thinking about these methods. For example, in case of static analysis, a single and constant force is considered, whereas in dynamic analysis, the value of the force changes during the analysis. Furthermore, linear and nonlinear analysis are mostly related to how materials, material, section properties, and geometry are taken into account. As discussed in session 3.2, when linear methods are used, a response modification factor is introduced to simply take into account the nonlinear behavior of members. Analysis methods can then be listed as follows. Equivalent lateral load method, response spectrum method, pushover analysis, and nonlinear time history analysis. The most accurate and reliable method is the nonlinear time history analysis, which is also the most complex one, since Creation of the analysis model is complex due to definition of nonlinear properties. It is also a complex procedure to obtain or create input motions which have high impact on reliability of the results. Furthermore, the time that is required to solve the problem is relatively long. And last but not least, the interpretation of the results is complex and requires extensive experience. Numerical, numerical analysis methods such as direct integration can be used to solve the problem and obtain a time history response of the structure. The analysis is done by step by step. A time step value is determined and analysis needs to be repeated for each time interval. The response can be obtained at all joints of the structure and one of the most important values to check is the top displacement history as you can see in the graph. The results obtained or the design completed using this method will be more realistic if all steps from selection of input motions to proper modeling of nonlinear behavior are well covered. Compared to the other methods, these results will provide less conservative design solutions. To better understand the response of the structures and to simplify the problem, the model analysis method has been developed. The response of structures are decomposed to different mode shapes, which are considered to be independent from each other. Each degree of freedom of the structure has a separate mode shape. Each mode shape has a different contribution ratio from the total behavior of the structure. This graph illustrates how different mode shapes are separated from the total behavior of the structure. In this case, a three degree of freedom system is analyzed and three different mode shapes are shown. When each mode shape is analyzed by using earthquake records and the results are superimposed, this is called a model response history method and it gives very close results to time history methods. Now, let's have a look at a more simplified approach, the response spectrum method.